ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Legacy SMP server. <laughs> We're back. Project's still half done. I do want to show you something. There's a different thing we're going to work on today. We're going to do something completely different. Something important is going on. But I do want to follow up on this because I found it so funny. Last time we moved this thing up into the sky. Uh-huh, right here. Uh, actually, <laughs> uh, let's me maybe take on my wings and stuff. <laughs> if I, In case I fall off, you know, there's water down below, but you never know. Anyway, we moved the villagers up here and I was like, super confused about why there was only two. Well, to begin with, now there are none. Except they are making sounds. So yes, indeed, um, they've all like gone to bed and then woken up on the other side. I closed them in with some wood here just so they wouldn't fall out, but oof. It took until I actually edited the episode to realize that um, there were only two to begin with. There are only two down there too. <laughs> And it explains so many things. It explains why this farm hasn't been working on that side down there and anything. I don't know how one disappeared, but it's villagers, so you never know. Maybe it just like glitched out and fell off and got killed or something. So, <laughs> now we have a different problem. Now we'll need to figure out how to actually breed another villager up here, which means we'll have a rebuild thing to, to do and all of those things. But, like I said, that's not what we're going to be doing today. Because hunting season is on. <laughs> it is time to hunt traders and trader llamas. We've got a couple of weeks here. I'm actually a little bit late. I was hoping to do, start doing this yesterday. So I'm behind already. We got all of these things. Five trader heads and two brown llamas. One of these and one of these and three of these. And uh, sadly, they don't matter. They don't count. We need to get, like, um, approved kills done during hunting season. <laughs> so, I have a plan. I have a masterful plan. Uh, and, of course, it involves actually farming these guys. Now, these are not normally farmed because you normally don't get anything from killing them, which makes this an amazing, amazing challenge. I love it. I absolutely love it. So, I've been reading up a bunch on, basically, on Wandering Trader's spawn mechanics, I guess you could call it. And, uh, well, I do have a plan. The problem is, Trader spawns. Well, they happen around the player, right? They happen in an area that is around any any random player. And it, it happens in an area that is quite large. <laughs> which means I'll need quite a lot of blocks to do this. Which is sad. So I'm gonna have to... I think I calculated I need like six or seven shulker boxes full of blocks to, to do this. So I'm going to need to rearrange stuff. Luckily, I have these shulker boxes full of just blocks I've dug out here. So they're all in disarray. I'm going to try to get only stone into them. And then maybe I'll even have to grab some of them and take them over to the, um, the, the other great dig. The one for the blast chamber project. And that would be okay too. I mean, I have a bunch of chests over there that are just full of garbage that I need to empty. But, you know, we have some preparations to do here before we actually get going. And then I'll take you on a ride to the place where we'll do it, because we won't be doing it here. Anyway, I'm going to try to get basically chocolate boxes full of basically only stone and stone brick. And then that's what we'll be bringing there. Hopefully six or seven of them. <laughs> All right, so I spent a bit of time here preparing. I have filled my inventory with basically vacuum cleaned up every single bit of stone in my entire base, which may or may not be smart, but we'll figure that out later. <laughs> So we have stone in five full shulker boxes and then one half full and then one empty. So I think maybe we'll just go over to the other base and pick them up anyway. We also need to go buy more wood, I think, because we'll need a number of stacks of traptors. Maybe I don't need that many, actually. We probably need quite a few. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but maybe this will be enough. Hmm. I know, I also packed up some nether brick fence. I kind of want to... Oh, uh, we should grab some more. Uh, I kind of want to surround the area with the, the fence if I can. Yeah, this should be good. This should all be good. So, let's head into the nether, because that's where we'll be kicking this off from. And let's have a look at the map. Here we are in the nether where all our stuff is. We are standing here, which on the world map corresponds to the sort of southernish end, the steampunk district. 
Notice here in the nether how everything is to the north of us. Few things are off to the east, the mining desert is off to the east, a bunch of things are to the north and northwest, but there's basically nothing to the south. We're going to use this because we want a little area for ourselves for this project. And the reason for that will become apparent later, but we actually do need to build with stuff in the nether as well. Ooh, I'm running out of food again. Rip. Anyway, let's head on off south for quite a while. So I'm just gonna fly for a bit. Who knows, we don't need to go that far. We just kind of want to be out of out of eyesight and, you know, far enough away that we don't risk connecting to somebody else's portal or whatever. So we'll go a couple of hundred blocks, which will be several thousand blocks in the other world, so it should be fine. Okay, portal set up. Let's lit this thing. We'll need to work more on it here later. If we're gonna have, we should probably move it up and stuff, but we'll think about that later. For now, I just want to step out and see where the heck I end up. In a cave? Are you kidding me? At level 16, we're on top of the under a mine shaft. Oh god, okay. We're tearing this down. This is not at all where I needed it. Okay, of course. Of course. Give me some give me some cave spider sounds on that. That's perfect. Perfect. Alright, we actually do need to light us up a little bit before we go on doing our merry best here. Wow! What a rubbish spawn. All right, so why did we end up here, you might ask? The reason appears to be that we are in deep ocean, which is less terrible than I thought, actually, assuming that we can find our way out. Uh, this just appears to be underwater, but I guess... Oh, perfect. Perfect. Look at this. That's actually really good. Because that means there definitely won't be any other spaces for it to spawn. The only bad part about this is, well, there's not much space to build on. We want to basically be building a platform off of the ocean surface a fair bit up. I really want to kind of get to the point where I am separated from basically everything else in the world. <laughs> as high up as possible. I was hoping to get higher because, well... You know, I was hoping there would be ground to start off from. But well, where are we? 127. To be honest, I kind of wanted to be higher. But there's the ocean. That, that actually does help. Maybe we'll be okay with this. Maybe we'll start our platform here. Let's stand here, watch the sunset, and talk about trader spawning. When the game attempts to spawn a trader, the first thing it does is pick a random player. We cannot affect that. Cannot affect that at all. Then it attempts to, around that player, find a bell. If it finds a bell, it will try to spawn around that bell. If it doesn't, it will try to spawn around the player. This is not a well-known thing, but we are going to use that fact. So the bell becomes the center point of the spawning. Remember this. We're going to need to go get a bell, by the way. Then the game looks within a 48 block distance from that point. It'll randomize positions to a distance at 48 in each axis. That means a 96 by 96 block square where it will attempt to spawn traders. If it succeeds, then great, it will also try to spawn two trader llamas for it. If it doesn't, well, then it will just save the hey I fail and I'll try again later. So, the key to us winning this contest is that we make sure that as many of the spawn attempts as possible that are attempted on us succeed. And that we manage to kill them all. <laughs> So what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, ideally we have a 96 by 96 block platform here centered around this point. So how do we deal with them after that? Well, remember the center point of that bell. Here's when it becomes significant. That bell is now the trading position for the llama. Regardless of where it spawned, it could be up to 48 blocks away in each direction. It will now have a memory that this bell is the trading point and it will try to walk towards that bell. Now that's what we're going to use to get the trader to walk and the llamas to follow all the way up to a point where we'll have some trapdoor set up next to the bell, make it fall into a water stream that leads into a portal and off they go to the nether. What does that mean? Well it means that the traders will stop ticking and so will not despawn. Mm-hmm. Ah uh, yes, so I uh, decided to pay a visit to a nearby village here, and I don't, I don't, I don't think they've ever seen some uh, steampunk stuff before, guys. 
there is it like I'm a god or something here. They they decided to just give me their most prized bell and also a lot of bread and some emeralds and, and look at all the hay bales. So the food problem is kind of fixed now. This is very nice. Very kind the people here. We'll leave them be. We'll, we'll let them be there and fly back to our project. <laughs> OK, so here is what I've done. I've gone up a little bit. I've set up this platform, a three by three platform. I think what we'll do is we'll put this bell right in the middle of that. So now there's there's that. Then we're going to go out a couple of blocks and we're going to make a, like a big ring around this so with a two block gap here in the center. The idea is we'll try to maximize the spawning spaces, but you know, it won't be fully possible to to make him spawn any anywhere but every time the game does this attempt at spawning it will attempt 10 times so as long as we can be reasonably certain that one out of 10 attempts at the very 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 least is successful then we should be guaranteed to get a wandering trader spawner every time it tries to spawn one on me when i'm standing here and i'll be standing here below dev king or whatever Okay, so of course I had one single log. <laughs> Too little. Uh, and even though this is just a practical build, I don't care about the aesthetics or whatever. I can't. I, I, can't. I, I have enough dark oak to make them. But I just can't. <laughs> Alright. So the idea now is we'll need to make a platform down here with like water streams and stuff to funnel the wonder traders all into a nice little portal setup here. So now we need to figure that out. Uh-huh, so now we have coverage for the entire space. I wanna build these up later, but we'll figure that out. Uh, this is the entire space where they can fall down. And I think, if I count to this right, it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, it is. So the perfect thing to do, I think, would be to make it eight like that. And then we can put buckets at the back corner, which will funnel them all this way. So if we put a water, let's, okay. Okay, fine. Let's maybe build it up and put torches on the sides first, just so we don't like accidentally make a dark room space here. Even if it has waters, I, I really don't want that. We don't need to cover it up fully. It just needs to be like not completely um, open in two spaces. I don't even know. Let's just do this, whatever. Like so. And now we take our buckets, put one there and one there, and then we can just water source the entire backside. And you can see that it all goes up here. And so it's pushing towards this direction. So now we'll just build this up so that they don't like have an escape route. And then build our portal again. And so we'll build our portal here. They'll get pushed. They, they'll walk over here, fall down, get pushed by the water over here, fall down again, get pushed by the water into the portal and end up in the nether. Woohoo! That's the place to be. All right, so portal is here. We're going to also cover up the backside of it so that we don't have any possibility that it would like go on portal timeout come back through and then fall off or something so now they're completely completely covered in there and i guess we could just as well like make a full pass here we just cover things up and light things up because we don't want any spawns down here this will be all covered so don't, we definitely don't want any spawns here. Okay, cool. Now we need to go back up there and keep working on the real big thing here, which is the enormous platform where this all is going to take place. Now, the fun part about this build also is that this is all my theory. And this is all like it's pretty well founded theory based off of, you know, what I know about the game. But it totally is a theory. It could be wrong. And I don't know if anybody's ever tried this in practice before, because why would you build such a farm? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're just going to count out the size of this and it's going to be enormous. <laughs> we're, we're now 48 blocks away. 
Um, this is quite a large thing. <laughs> but I think we can do it. I think we'll build this out. Or we'll just use these stone blocks to build it. We're not going to be making anything special with it. And I do want to put the fence around it, but we'll have to do this in a couple of passes, I think. And we definitely 100% want to light it all up. I don't want any mobs spawning up here, except the wandering traders. Well, yes. Okay, so I did all four directions now. Now you can kind of start seeing how big this thing is going to get. It's going to... It's going to kind of be crazy, and that's why we needed the five shulker boxes full of stone. But I guess I'll just get to building this now. <laughs> the, yeah, I guess we'll do a time lapse or something. We also need to put like torches all across this thing, and yeah, it'll be crazy. Best case, the very best case, best luck we could have, is that a wandering trader shows up while we're building it, and actually verifies for us that, that, that this section in here, actually I'm going to do that, uh, that this section in here actually works. Because we, we kind of don't know that. Hold on. Yes, I do have an inventory space. Give me that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this so that this section here is all set up for what we needed to do. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll be building. Okay, well, <laughs> that's one quarter of the farm done. Now we need to light this all up with torches. I'm doing a four torch pattern, so three blocks in between each torch. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a little over the top, but it will prevent zombie reinforcements from spawning, uh, which is good, I think. I just really don't want to risk it because one zombie coming into that place could mess everything up. And it would suck to have like afk a whole night and gotten like tons of sp tons i don't know a few spawns with traders and they like get yeeted by a zombie or whatever because all stuck in a little containment chamber in the nether Okay, well, <laughs> half of the platform built, missing a lot of coal here for all these torches, and also, to be honest, missing sticks. I don't want to use up these birch logs if I don't have to. So, we'll need to take a round trip back home. Feeling that this might not be enough, actually. We might want to go over to the other base, too. But, this is pretty nice. We have half of the thing built, and the way things works, if it tries ten times around here, um... Since there's just water in this section, it shouldn't find any of this. Which means that at this point, if my steam calculation machine is right, then uh, we have about a 90% chance of the trader managing to spawn if it tries at this point. But anyway, we need to go back and get stuff. So we'll drop down here. This is the way things are going to go. And we'll light this portal again so that we can travel back into the nether. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have now built three of the four quarters of this enormous platform. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of blocks I've placed by now, but uh, this is my hands are hurting and whatever. And my steam calculator is telling me that the risk that I won't get a wandering trader spawner if the game selects me to spawn on is now 0.00095%. This is basically non-existent. 
So a smart person would stop building at this point. But I can't leave it like this. Can I? The big slice. <laughs> Missing. I just, I just can't. I gotta put down a whole boatload of torches here. And though it hurts because the math now says that it should be able to just leave this chunk. I'm not going to. I'm going to actually finish building it. <laughs> but torches first. This is crazy, after this enormous build, we're kind of one stack or so short of stone. Wow! Alright, well, I guess I'll go back, uh, well, I won't go back home. I will be going to the other uh, build, to the mining mesa, and picking up stuff from there. Ooh, do I? I have, I have enough shulk boxes, it's fine. Uh, huh. <laughs> This ocean of torches is done now, too. We ended up with five torches left. It's surprisingly accurate. Yes, this is the entire spawning pad for wandering traders. Wow. <sighs> I went over to the Mesa biome base, or what do you want to call it, build and grab the four shulkers full of stone from there. So it's fine. We have the materials to wrap this up now. There are two things remaining. Most importantly, the power of steam. Is the combination of water and fire. We need the nether side of this build and then we also do need a sort of an AFK platform thing. We'll do the nether side of this first. Mm hmm so there we have it. We have a layer of slabs here on top to prevent them from having any friends join them. Otherwise we could get spawns up here uh, but then here there's just a couple of trapdoors. Hopefully they'll spot a random position up there to walk towards and they'll walk off. Ending up down here. We'll come here and um, join them later. So all that remains now is to wait and see if our prey falls for the trap. Um, so I guess I'll do that. I guess I'll leave uh, this on if sort of afk on the server overnight or something and i'll catch up with you afterwards see how efficient or inefficient this has been will we win the challenge win all the diamond blocks or was this all for nothing who knows we won't find that out for a while but at least we'll find out if we get any hits <laughs> well ladies and gentlemen it is now the following morning i don't know if you can hear it on my voice you're looking at the entire chat log of the night this is the very top here is when I logged back on after the stream last night. And there's just basically nothing. It looks like people haven't really been on. Like, who knows when Vigo joined, but this is a good sign. Also, it's... Okay. It's daytime and it's raining. Well, it means basically I've been hopefully even alone on the server for a significant time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that little problem. Um, definitely forgot about that problem. If they went back through, then I guess we're screwed. Dang. Seems reasonable that they would. Although the water might be pushing them here all the time. Hi, dude. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Oh, there's a trader here somewhere. He only got a few. I see the particles of his... All right. He's here somewhere. You thought you could escape. Oh, give me that sweet, sweet head. All right, one wandering trader head. None from the llamas. Ah, pity, and only one. Uh, I wonder... I mean, it didn't look like the zombie pigmen were interfering. It really didn't. One head. 
One point. I had expected more. I definitely had expected more. V goes on in AFK. I don't know. I really don't know what to expect, what kind of rates. <laughs> it is a slow thing, the spawning, but oh well. Anyway, we got our first hunting kill, <laughs> our first trophy, and it'll still be good enough. I'll keep using this as much as I can for the duration of this competition, I suppose. We'll gather all of these up. Maybe we'll take one of these. Uh, well, now I filled them all with stone, but uh, I guess one of them should be. This one is empty. Okay, let's. This is our trophy box now. We're gonna put everything that we get from this competition in here. So here we go. First score. <laughs> Hopefully one of many to come. I have no idea how how well the others are doing, but what did, what did we have? We had like a five or so from before for all the two months on the server, so not, not too bad. Good start. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Legacy SMP series. This is Slice Lime. We'll be back next time with some more building on the airship back at the base, but until then, have a great time. I'll see you later.